بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم أما بعد حبت في الله السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته may Allah subhanahu wa taala bless us all with علم نافع ورزق طيب وعمل متقبل آمين يا رب العالمين continue on in our study of شرع السنة لإمام المزني رحمة الله عليه رحمة واسعة we last, our last lesson, we were talking about the alu of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ascended above his throne. And I just wanted to mention, without going uh, further into uh, the many, many evidences, but I wanted to get a, just a quick glimpse of how the salaf, some of the salaf, what they said about this, uh, the concept of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, uh, Ascending above his throne to Barakwa Ta'ala in a manner that suits his majesty because we we have those ayat where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Kitab al-Kareem Ar-Rahman ala arsh istawa the most merciful rules above his throne uh, and Ahl Sunnah they affirm that they affirm that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ascends and that he ascend, uh, ascended above his throne and he ascends in a manner that suits his majesty and we don't try to negate that. We don't try to explain it away with our intellect to make it and distort the, uh, make ta'wil either ta'wil lefdi or ta'wil ma'nawi. Ta'wil here, ta'wil has different definitions. One of the definitions for ta'wil uh, is tafsir, meaning to explain. So you'll find that some of the mufassirin and some of the early scholars, when they referred to the concept of ta'wil, it had the meaning of tafsir, meaning to explain. So you could say ta'wil al-hadith, uh, ta'wil al-athar, ta'wil al-ayah, uh, al you know, the ta'wil, the explanation of the ayah, the explanation of this hadith, and so on and so forth. And then there's the other meaning of ta'wil, ta'wil which is used in a negative sense, and this is what we're usually uh, referring to when we talk about ta'wil and we're talking about the other groups, groups like the Asha'ida and other sects that make ta'wil of the divine attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is that they yu'awwul or they uh, misconstrue the meaning and as I mentioned this ta'wil is of two types Ta'wil lavdi, ta'wil ma'nawi. Ta'wil lavdi. So this means to explain away the word to distort the actual uh, Arabic word itself. To distort the actual uh, spelling of the word, if you will. This is lavdi. So for example, the Asha'ira, when uh, they explain that Ar Rahman ala Arsh Istawa, they say Istawa means Istola. So here they've actually distorted the physical, if you will, the, the actual pronunciation and the actual textual word itself as part of its explanation. So they say Istawa means istola. So this is called ta'wil ladhi. This is ta'wil ladhi. This means that they change the actual alfad. They change the actual meaning, uh, and not just the meaning of, of the text, but because what's implied here is that of obviously that changes the meaning, but here they've changed the actual word itself. It's like a distortion of the actual word. And it would be best illustrated, of course, uh, by, uh, by writing it. Estoa to estola. Okay? That's actually the left of the text itself, of the, 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 the word itself. The second way in which they uh, make ta'wil is ta'wil ma'nawi. And that means to make ta'wil or distort or misconstrue the actual meaning. So actually when they say estola 
to see is stola or arsh. That does both. It changes the actual word, it's lefty, and it's manawi. Because it changes the meaning itself. Because estola means to like take something by force, overcome something. Uh, you know, they it's often used in, in talking about battles or in colonialism, estola al art, you know, to, to overcome and, and take someone's someone's uh, land. Estola. So by making this tat wheel, they actually in fact are making tat wheel levdi wal ma'nawi because it's changing the meaning and the the alfad itself of the, the text. But Ahl Sunnah affirms its meaning. So, Shaykhana, Shaykh Ubaid al Jabri, Hafid Allah Ta'ala, he mentions a nice a benefit before we get on to the next point of getting and talking about the, the Qadr of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. He says, or first before that, uh, Imam al Mazani, he had mentioned in the last part of the text about. Al Alu in the section about Alu, he mentioned he said he mentioned the ayat where Allah Subhanahu wa Taala says in Kitab Al Kareem, "Ya'lamu ka'ina ta ka'ina ta a'yun wa ma takhfi al sudur." So Allah Subhanahu wa Taala says in Kitab Al Kareem, "Allah knows the fraud of the eyes, and all that the breasts conceal." So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows the fraud of the eyes. He knows uh, every, everything that we see. He knows uh, if we try to deceive. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has full knowledge of everything, as we mentioned prior to this. And he knows what the breasts conceal. He knows what's in our hearts. While no, the creation knows not. You know that you may not be sincere in an action. You know that you may believe otherwise, but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also knows fully. He knows you better than you know yourself. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. Uh, Shaykh Ajabri, Allah ta'ala, he mentions about this concept, the concept of al alu that uh, Ahl Sunnah affirms for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as he, Tabarak wa ta'ala, affirms for himself. He says, وَأَجْمَلْ أَحْلُ السُنَّةِ أَجْمَلْ أَحْلُ السُنَّةِ عَلَى هَذَا النُّورِ مِنْ عُلُو وَمِنْ نَقَلَ عِجْمَا الْعُزَاعِ عَبْدِ الرَّحْمَنِ بِنْ عَامِرْ رَحِمُهُ اللَّهُ تَعَالَى قَالْ كُنَّا نُقُولْ وَتَابِعُونَ مُتَوَافِرُونَ أَنَّ اللَّهَ فُوكَ أَرْشِهِ بَائِنْ مِنْ خَلْكِهِ وَنَقْلَ إِجْمَا غَيْرُهُ So he mentions that Ahlul Sunnah that they have consensus about this uh, this uh, concept of, uh, of Al-Alu you know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ascended above his throne that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is above his creation and he said, from amongst those who said, who recorded, if you will, or narrated that this was, that there was ijma, or related that it was ijma, that there was a consensus about this issue, was Imam al Uzai. And also, Abdurrahman, or uh, Imam al Uzai, Abdurrahman ibn Amr, Rahimullah Ta'ala. And he said, we used to say, and the tabi'een. So this lets us know this is the aqidah salafi. This is the aqidah of Ahlul Sunnah. This is the aqidah of the Salaf al -Salih. He said, we used to say, and the tabi'een, meaning those, uh, those uh, scholars who studied with the Sahaba, radiallahu ta'ala, and Majma'een. And they were, uh, during the time of this, the, the, the tabi'in, that, all, uh, that Allah was above his throne and separate 
totally separate from his creation. Tabarak wa ta'ala. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is above his creation. So this is the aqeed of Ahlul Sunnati wal Jama'ah. Then Imam al Mazni, Rahmatullahi Rahmatun Wasia, began the next portion of the treaties, which is illustrating the Itikad of Ahlul Sunnah, by talking about the Qadha wa Qadr, the divine decree of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah, and we'll talk about the Maratib wa Qadr. So Imam al Mazni, Rahmatullahi Rahmatun Wasia, he said, فَالْخَلْقْ عَامِلُونَ بِسَابِقِ عَلْمِهِ وَنَافِذُونَ لِمَا خَلَقَهُمْ لَهُ مِنْ خَيْرٍ وَشَرٍ وَلَا يَمْلِكُونَ لِأَنفُسِهِمْ مِنَ الطَّاعَةِ نَفْعًا وَلَا يَجِدُونَ إِلَى صَرْفِ الْمَعَاسِيَةِ عَنْهَا دَفْعًا إمام مزني mentions here he says Allah uh, he says the creation act in accordance to Allah's foreknowledge and they carry out whatever he created them for from goodness and evil and they are unable to benefit from obedience by themselves and they do not find themselves able to avert disobedience as a defense. So here, Allah, uh, the uh, Imam Mazni, Rahmatullahi is referring to the concept of the Qadr, the divine creed of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. And it's very important for us to get a to, in order to have a uh, some sort of uh, usul, if you will, a, a foundation about the Qadr, we should talk about the Maratib al Qadr. We should talk about the levels of the divine decree and what this entails. And the ulama, the scholars, they mention that there are ar uh, arba Maratib, there are four levels, four levels of the uh, decree of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The first level is al khalq which has to do, which means that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created everything, al khalq that he created everything within that divine decree. Everything. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is al khalq he created everything. And that is, forms a part of the concept of the Qadr, and you'll see why when we, uh, wh when we discuss all, all four of them. The second level of the Qadr, if you will, is Al-Ilm, meaning that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has knowledge over everything. Knowledge and knowledge of everything. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has knowledge of everything. He created everything and he knows everything. All of this forms the Qadr and this forms the Usul of Ahl Sunnah. That these concepts must be in place and you can see that the deficiency of those people who went astray with regarding the with regards to the divine decree of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is because they negated some aspect of these maratib, of these levels of the qadr. So we said the first one is uh khalq, that Allah created everything. Secondly, uh ilm, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows everything. The third level is al mashiya that everything is in accordance with the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Everything is in accordance with the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But this is where a lot of people have difficulty uh, understanding some aspects of this, uh, of the Mashiatillah. And when we talk about the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you can talk about this, this Mashia or also referred to as arada, irada, uh, meaning the, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has, there's the arada or the will, koniya wa shar'iya. Koniya wa shar'iya. Koniya is general, meaning that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has a, a general will 
okay, that everything is in accordance with the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But there's a difference with this uh, uh, arada or mashia koniya. That means there may be things Allah is displeased with, but it's in accordance with his will. So we just have to gain uh, an understanding of this. And let's see if we can give you an example. For example, in accordance with Arada Koniya, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created everything, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, 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 has knowledge of everything, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, this is in accordance with his will. We have a person who may who disbelieves in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Okay? A person who disbelieves in Allah. There are many people who disbelieve in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. People who worship idols, people who worship elephants, people who worship uh, rats and private parts, all kind of different uh, uh, belief systems, okay, that are kufr, okay, that make up the various types of disbelief. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the creator of everything. This is in accordance with his general will. This means koniya. That does not mean he's pleased with it. Because he chooses for you, he wants for you what is known as arada shari'a. This is the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, which is in accordance with the shari'a, which is in accordance with the sharia. Meaning those things Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, wants for you uh, that that are good, that are in accordance with his ayat, the ayat, um, uh, the, the uh, in accordance with the Quran, and in accordance with the Sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. That is arada sharia. So arada kauniya, everything is within, falls. Everything falls within the arada uh, uh, kauniya because you can't go outside the will of Allah subhanahu wa taala. Arada sharia refers to those things which. Uh, are in accordance with the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and he is pleased with. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is pleased that someone embraces Islam, that they leave kufr to come to iman. This is arada shari'a. Or that someone prays the, their daily salat five times a day. Hada arada shari'a. That is the arada shari'a. That arada, the will, the divine will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, which is in accordance with with the Sharia, in accordance with the ayat of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then the last uh, level of the Qadr, which we need to uh, discuss, is the Kitabah, Al-Kitabah. Al-Kitabah refers that everything was written by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in Allah al-Mahfuz. So everything uh, in the creation falls within within uh, this uh, these maratib al qadr that Allah created everything, Allah knows everything, Allah has a divine will. Everything falls within the will of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, and we mentioned the two types, and that Allah Subhanahu wa Taala has written everything, al kitaba Imam Ahmed al Najmi, rahmatullahi he says in regards to this portion of the treaties, and he's going to give us, and I, I'm just going to, for the sake of being concise, we'll be as quick as possible, because now the time for prayer has entered. Uh, he says, Khalaqallahu al-ibad wal anfad fihim mashiyatihi wa hakama fihim bi'adlihi lakinnahu qad ja'ala li'ibadihi mashiyatin wa ikhtiyarin وهم يختارون الطاعة أو معصية وهم يختارون سبيل السعادة أو شكاوى ولكنهم ولكنهم في ذلك لا يخرجون عن إرادته. طيب. This is a very important عبارة. So Imam Ahmed Al Najmi رحمة الله عليه he said Allah created his uh, his servants and he has decreed for them in accordance with his will. In accordance with his will. And he judges them with justice. 
So these are all principles that we have to affirm. We have to know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is al-adil. That's one of his sifat. So never are you oppressed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. No matter what happens in your life, the difficulties, the trials and tribulations, and how the shaitan may whisper to you, it's never in, uh, injustice from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but rather the creation are unjust. And so everything is from his divine wisdom and hikmah. This is the qadr, the divine decree. And everything he decrees in accordance with his will. And we talked about the two types of Mashiach, okay, or arada, uh, two types of arada. And with this, along with this, this is what we need to know for the usul of the foundation of, the, uh, of understanding the qadr. Affirm these principles, uh, understand these principles, and that's sufficient. You don't need to go deeper into, we, we go in and we stop with the nasus, and this is why the Prophet wasallam said not to go and get into debates and get into uh, delving into the qadr. Just accept from the nasus. And that is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commands us to do. A'udhu billahi min shaitan rajim, bismillah rahman rahim, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Alif Lam Mim Dalik al Kitab Allah Rayba fi Hudin al Muttaqin Allah Dina Yukminun Bil Rayb. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says after uh, after Bismillah Rahman Rahim, Alif Lam Mim. Dalik al Kitab Allah Rayb. This is a book wherein there's no doubt. Hudin al Muttaqin, it's a guidance for the for those who are pious. Allah Dina Yukminun Bil Rayb, those who believe in the unseen. So the Quran is a guidance for the Muttaqin. And who are the muttaqeen? Alladina yu'minuna bil ghayb. Those who believe in the ghayb. So what you need to know about this ghayb, about this, about the, the qadr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, inshallah ta'ala, this, what is being articulated here, will suffice without going deep and trying to uh, go beyond what is necessary to understand. Baib. So, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, with his, his justice, he judges with his justice, and he gives the servant a choice. So at the same time, although everything is decreed and everything falls under that maratib al-qadr, we do have a choice. And we can choose, some of them choose obedience to Allah, and others choose masiyah, others choose disobedience to Allah, sinfulness. And they choose the path of of. of of happiness or the path of, of difficulty and sadness, which is disbelief and kufr. However, they do not, even though they have this choice, this limited free will, if you will, so there is free will, we do believe in free will, but not to the extent as some of the philosophers describe as ultimate free will or what have you. We believe that everything was decreed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and everything was created by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and Allah knows everything. He knows the, the outcome, but we don't know the outcome. That's why we have to make amal. We have to do deeds. We have to strive and we have to make righteous choices bi idnillah ta'ala and we're held responsible for that. Right? All of this, none of this goes outside the arada of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we believe that Allah does not oppress anyone. He's al-adl. However, people, they oppress themselves and they oppress others. And may Allah guide those who, are, who oppress us from the mu'mineen and forgive us for oppressing others. And whoever is guided, that this guidance is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And it is from uh, His justice subhanahu wa ta'ala. And, we'll, uh, and, and we also have to understand that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Fi Kitab al Karim, in this ayat, gives us a good uh, understanding and, and affirms for us this, these concepts of the Qadr. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says to Kitab al Karim, Inna khalaqna al insana min nutfatin imshajin nabtalihi faja'alna hu sami'un basira. إِنَّا هَدَيْنَهُ السَّبِيلَ إِمَّا شَاكِرٍ وَإِمَّا كَفُورًا Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Verily we have created, uh, we've created uh, insan from, uh, you know, a blood clot, <coughs> from nutfah. And we have tested him, you know, tested insan, tested him, tested him. 
and we have <clears throat> made him, given him hearing and sight. Samiyum Basia. And verily, we have guided him to the Sabil, to the you know the straight path. And he is either Shakidin O Kafura. He's either grateful or ungrateful. So that shows us that mankind has a choice. Mankind has a choice, and none of it falls out the, of the divine decree of Allah. We're going to end with this last important point just to understand. One of the first sects in Islam, the Qadariya, they fall into two types. They were a group that there was the Nufat al-Qadr, those who negated, they were, they totally uh, negated that uh, Allah created evil at all. So here they affirm, they said, in Allah khalaq al-khayr, walam yakhluq al Basically, in essence, that will be sufficient for what we need to know about them, is that they believed, the Nufat al-Qadr, they believed that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created the good and did not create the evil. So then we attribute evil and its creation and everything to only mankind. That And so uh, that Allah uh, created ta'a, but he did not decree masiyah. That goes against the Aqid of Ahl Sunnah. We say Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created everything. He knows everything and every and, and that the arada, his will, that even that evil is in within his will and he tests, he tests us. Inna khalaqna al-insana min nutfatin imshajin nabtalihi. We, we test him. So this is a part of the test and it's from his divine justice and it's from his divine hikmah. But the nufat, they... Don't believe this. The other uh, aspect of the Qadariya was the Qadariya Mujabir, meaning the Qadariya Jabriya, that they believe that the Abd is Majbur ala A'mala Shar, wa Majbur ala Kufr wa Shirk. So basically, they said that the servant has no will, we have no choice. So really, it wouldn't be from justice that we should even be held accountable. The one who's doing evil and drinking and committing zina and doing all evil sins, they're forced to do it because it's all under the decree of Allah. So here they say that the servant has no will. So they also were extreme in this. And this is why uh, the people of the, the Qadariya, some of them, that they, for various reasons, the Salaf used to make takfir of them. Because here, some of them, they decree, they, they negate the fact that Allah has the, the power and the, the, the cre that he had the, the ability to create uh, evil. And another group said, you know, just, just negated that the slave has any uh, uh, will and that everything were just decreed like puppets in a, a sense, that we have no choice. And so that's a little bit about the Qadriya, and we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil.